All right, we're going to look at smoothness of parameterized curves. So we have here a definition of smoothness. Our textbook talks about this, but kind of in a paragraph, doesn't really have a clear definition set off from the rest of the text. So uh, it's important that you kind of note this. This is probably not something you're going to get from just uh, reading the textbook. So vector valued function r of t generates a smooth parameterization of a curve if we have two conditions here that we have to check. So you need to make sure that both of these conditions are checked. And the other important thing to notice is that both of these conditions are really about the derivative vector dr dt or sometimes we might state this in terms of v of t. The other thing to notice there is that that's the zero vector so we're not just talking about one component being zero we're talking about all of the components being zero. And when you think about it like that it's also uh, helpful maybe to realize that this definition really has to do with velocity if you think about it in terms of motion. And so uh, the derivative vector, the velocity vector never being zero would indicate that the object never stops even instantaneously. And then thinking about what it might mean for a velocity function to be non continuous and thinking about what that motion would mean that would basically mean an object that is um, moving in kind of an erratic way if you think about a velocity being non-continuous. So uh, it's important to understand that these are both about velocity. You should be able to write down this definition and be able to use it to determine if curves are smooth. The other thing it's important to understand, and this is what our textbook is a little bit vague about, is that what we're really talking about here is a particular parameterization of a curve being smooth. And so when you look at a graph of a curve, you can't really see the parameterization of that. And so it's important to understand that you need to see that parameterization in order to determine if it is smooth. All right, I'm going to scroll up here and we're going to look at a few different examples. I have five different examples typed here and we're going to look at all of them. Um, and these are some important examples. I think if you pay attention to this and keep these in mind, that'll help you remember some important things about smoothness. Uh, so the first thing I want to notice here is that all of these uh, are different parameterizations. They're all in R2, so we don't have to think in R3, although we certainly could. Just makes it a little bit easier to think about the pictures if we're just in R2. And in general, anytime you're thinking about anything with a vector valued function, you probably want to think about the domain. So I'm just going to go through and quickly think about the domain for each of these and also what the graph of the curve looks like even though that's not exactly what we're interested in for smoothness. So for this first one the domain would be all real numbers so we could just say that t goes from negative infinity to infinity and if I want to think about what the graph of that curve looks like I might try to eliminate the parameter. It's pretty easy to do for this one. Uh, so x is t, y is t and so that means I get at x equals y, which you should recognize as a line. And uh, since this is a parameterized curve, we have an orientation. Both x and y are increasing functions of t, so the orientation is to the right. And going from uh, t going from negative infinity to infinity, we'll trace that curve exactly once. All right, on this next one here, we do have some issues with the domain. Uh, the domain cannot include t values that are pi over 2 plus k pi. So when I wrote that down, I didn't exactly say what the domain is. I kind of said the values that are not in the domain. Uh, so we'll go ahead and state the domain in a second here. But let's think about the graph of this curve. So if I again eliminate the parameter, uh, x equals tangent t and y equals tangent t, um, well, we get again x equals y. So again, we have the same line that we had before. Uh, we might want to think about whether we get the whole line or not and what the orientation is on that. Uh, so the tangent function is periodic, so it repeats over and over and over again, which means if I let t go from negative infinity to infinity, I will cycle over this line over and over and over again. But really just one cycle of t going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, not equaling either of those values. Uh, when I let t go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, the tangent function will go from negative infinity to infinity. So I will get 
x values going from negative infinity to positive infinity and also y values from negative infinity to positive infinity. The interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 traces this entire curve once and x and y are both increasing functions of t on that interval so the orientation is also to the right. So the graph of those two is the same curve. Different t interval perhaps but the graph is actually the same graph if you're just going to look at the picture. All right, uh, for this next one, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. And notice again that I get x equals y again. And as t goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh, we will have orientation to the right as t increases, x and y increases. And so that also is the same line. Uh, you might notice that these next two are the same. I get x equals y for both of these. Um, for R4, the domain is just going to be positive values of t, so 0 to infinity. For R5, uh, the domain will be negative infinity to infinity. And on both of these, uh, that interval will trace the curve exactly once. I'll get the whole curve exactly once. Even on the R4, sometimes students think that that graph should look like a, the graph of a natural logarithm function. But if you eliminate the parameter, you get y equals x, which is a line. And uh, when t is near zero, x and y will both be uh, very far negative down here in quadrant three down here. And then as t increases, we'll go to the right and x and y will go to positive infinity. So the important thing to notice about all of those is that they are all the same graph. The picture looks the same. Some of these parameterizations are smooth and some are not. And the key thing to emphasize about having all these be the same picture is that you cannot tell whether a parameterization is smooth or not just from looking at the picture. Okay, so in order to think about whether these are smooth parameterizations or not though, I need to think about the domain of the function, but really what I need to check is the velocity vector or the derivative vector. So I'm going to calculate that for each of these. So there are two conditions I need to check. I need to check to see if the velocity vector is continuous. This first v1 vector is continuous for all values of t. And I need to see if the velocity vector is ever the zero vector. So for this v1, that velocity vector is never the zero vector. Both of those components are always one. So this first parameterization, we do have a smooth parameterization. We would say that R1 is a smooth parameterization of this line. Okay, so our second one here, again, we're asking those same questions. Is that velocity vector continuous? Is the velocity vector ever equal to the zero vector? So this velocity vector is not continuous for all values of t, but it is continuous for the values of t that we said trace the curve once. So this interval of t going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that velocity vector is continuous on that interval. So this is continuous, this v2 is continuous on the domain of r2 and even on a part of the domain. And uh, when thinking about if that velocity vector is ever equal to the zero vector, I want to think about whether secant squared of t is ever equal to zero. Secant squared is one over cosine squared. And so that will never be equal to zero. Fraction would only be zero if the numerator is zero. So that's never equal to zero. So that velocity vector is continuous on its domain and it is also never equal to the zero vector for any values of t. So R2 here is also a smooth parameterization on its domain. All right, for R3 here, I'm going to look at that velocity vector. That velocity vector is continuous for all values of t, uh, but that velocity vector is the zero vector when t equals zero, and t equals zero is part of the domain of that function. So for R3 here, we would say that this parameterization, R3, is not a smooth parameterization, and specifically, it's not smooth at t equals zero. Notice that the graph is the same for R1, R2, and R3. The picture is the same. I can't just look at the picture to determine if the parameterization is smooth. All right, for R4, we've got our velocity vector there. That velocity vector is not continuous for all values of t, 
but it is continuous on the domain of the function, which was zero to infinity, and that velocity vector is never the zero vector, so R4 is also a smooth parameterization on its domain. It doesn't really make sense to talk about R4 out of its domain, so we would say R4 is a smooth parameterization of that same line y equals x. All right, for this last one here, uh, v5, um, that velocity vector is not continuous at t equals zero. t equals zero is in the domain of the function. So we would say that r5 is not smooth at t equals zero. Uh, the velocity vector is never equal to the zero vector, uh, but it's not continuous at t equals zero. So we would say that r5 is not smooth specifically at t equals zero. Okay, so part of the point of all of this is that you have to pay attention to the velocity vector in order to determine smoothness, and the other point is in looking at all of these pictures, noticing that these are all the same picture, that I can't just look at the picture to determine whether the parameterization is smooth or not. I'm gonna scroll down here and just do a quick little summary. Uh, you cannot just look at the picture to determine smoothness, and in fact, the same picture might be smooth for one parameterization, but not smooth for another parameterization of the same picture. The other thing that's important, uh, generally from Calc 1, students tend to think about smoothness as having to do with sharp corners or perhaps breaks in the graph. Sharp corners or breaks in the graph would indicate non-smoothness. Uh, you would not be able to write a smooth parameterization but the absence of sharp corners does not necessarily mean that the parameterization is smooth. And just as a way to kind of remember that, a key example that can help you remember that is to think about the graphs that we looked at where we had several different parameterizations of the same curve, some of which were smooth and some of which were not, and the ones that were not smooth were not smooth for various reasons. So uh, key things to remember there, and again, our textbook isn't very clear about that, but smoothness is a condition that we're gonna see over and over again. It's gonna be required for a lot of the theorems and formulas that we're gonna use later in the chapter and really in the rest of the course.